Hi there, my name is Dr. Marissa May. In this video, we're gonna be looking at solving equations. Now, the key to solving equations and all of the problems that we do in this video is we use the opposite operation. So that means when you look at an equation and you see addition, I want you to do the opposite, which would be subtraction. So let's take a look and do just that here in problem number one. So I have P plus five equals negative 10. Here's what I want you to ask yourself. What is happening to the variable? Well, the variable is being added by five. So we are gonna do the opposite of adding five, which is to subtract five. Now I'm gonna show you the subtracting five on the left side of the equal, but I've also gotta do it to the right side of the equal. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I gotta do the same thing to the other side of the equation. You may have heard that phrase before. Why do we do that? Because when we have plus five minus five, those are opposites, they cancel each other out. And we're left with just this P by itself. Then we work on the other side, negative 10 minus five. Feel free to use your calculator for that one. If you need to, that gives us negative 15. Boom, I'm done. Like, that's my answer. That's all I had to do. All right, it's gotta get more complicated than this, yes. Yeah, so, but that's okay. I want us to make sure we're starting simple and it's going to get more difficult from there, but I wanna make sure we understand even the simple part. So look at problem number two here. Negative 7.5 equals R minus 2.6. If you need to put a little note to yourself where that variable is so you can focus your eye, ask yourself what's happening to the variable. It's being subtracted by 2.6. What is the opposite of subtracting 2.6? It's to add 2.6, exactly. So we're gonna add 2.6 to both sides. Now, why do we do that? Because when you do the opposite, it cancels out and we're left with this variable R. Now, negative 7.5 plus 2.6 would give me negative 4.9. And that's my solution. Now, these two examples, one and two here, are called one-step equations. Why? Because we had to do one thing to both sides of the equation in order to get the variable by itself. Now, look at number three here. When you ask yourself the question, what's happening to the variable? There are two things that are happening to the variable. One, the variable's being multiplied by four, right? And then it's being added by nine. So we have to do the opposite and we do the opposite of the adding nine first. So the opposite of adding nine is to subtract nine. So we'll do that from both sides of the equation. This time, when we do that, the opposites cancel, but we're not left with just n, we're left with four n. Now we have to undo the multiplying by four. The opposite of multiplying by four is to divide by four. So we divide by four on both sides. And again, those opposites cancel and I'm left with n equals negative three. Again, these are called a two-step equation because there are two things we had to do to get the variable by itself. Look at problem number four here. What's happening to your variable? It's being divided by three and it's being added by 11. So the opposite, we do the opposite of the adding 11 part first. The opposite of adding 11 is to subtract 11 those opposites cancel, and we're left with the m divided by three part equals 18. Now, what's happening to the variable? It's being divided by three. So we have to do the opposite of dividing by three, which is to multiply by three. So we're gonna multiply by three on both sides. The opposites cancel, leaving me with m equals 54. So really, I want you to see it's all about looking and asking yourself what's happening to the variable and then going and doing the opposite of that to both sides of the equation. All of our work from here on out in the lesson are going to come back to a two-step equation and notice a two-step equation is going to come back to a one-step equation. So you have the basics here. Let's see if we're going to do a couple of more multiple multi-steps so we have a little bit of simplifying to do first so you'll notice in problem number one here we can combine the y plus the four y which will give me five y and then don't forget my minus seven equals 13. 
Do you see how I didn't do something to both sides of the equation? I just simplified one side. Yeah, that's what I want to do first if I can. Now I can ask myself what's happening to the variable. It's being multiplied by five, being subtracted by seven. So we're going to do the opposite of subtracting seven. The opposite of subtracting seven is to add seven. And notice we do that to both sides of the equation. The opposites cancel. That gives me 5y equals 20. Now we do the opposite of multiplying by 5. The opposite of multiplying by 5 is to divide by 5. And my opposites cancel again, and I get y equals 4. Right? So notice after I did the simplifying step, I got to a two-step equation that I could start doing the opposites for. All right, take a look at number 2 then. This one, I see a number in front of a parentheses. That lets me know I can use the distributive property. So I'm going to distribute the 3 to the a, and that'll give me 3a. I'm multiplying, right? Then I'm going to distribute the 3 to the 5, and that'll give me 15. And then notice I can combine like terms here on the left. The minus 15 plus 19 will give me 4. And notice what I have now. It's back to a two-step equation, right? These all come back to that two-step equation once I simplify. So what's happening to your variable? It's being multiplied by 3. It's being added by 4. So we'll do the opposite of adding 4, which is to subtract 4. That opposites cancel, giving me 3a equals negative 6. And now we do the opposite of multiplying by 3, which is divide by 3. And that gives me a equals negative 2. Voila, right? Okay, remember, all the simplifying comes back to a two-step equation, and then we start doing opposites. So look at number 3. This is called variables on both sides because I have a variable on the left side and I've got a variable on the right side. So when you see variables on both sides, the very first thing you have to do is to get all the variables on one side. I'm going to do this by moving the 2K. So since the 2K is being added, I've got to do the opposite. I'm going to subtract the 2K. Notice where I write the subtract 2K part. I write it underneath its like term or the term that has the same variable. So my opposites cancel, but look at what I have here. 6K minus 2K is 4K. Now we're back to a two-step equation. Do you see how this works? It all kind of funnels back to a two-step equation. We may simplify first. We may move all the variables to one side, but eventually we're going to get to a two-step equation. So we're going to do the opposite of subtracting two, which is to add two. My opposites cancel, so I get 4K equals 15. Then I do the opposite of multiplying by four, which is to divide by four and k equals 15 fourths, or 3.75 if you want to do it that way. All right, let's do one more like that where you got to move the variables to both sides. Uh, look at number four. Um, this one, I can either move the minus 2p or I can move the positive 4p. I kind of like to keep the, the variables positive, so I'm going to move this minus 2p by adding 2p to both sides. And again, notice that I write it underneath its like term. My opposites cancel, giving me 8 equals 6p minus 10. There's my two-step equation, right? So we're going to do the opposite of minus 10, which is to add 10. And that gives me 18 equals 6p. And then we do the opposite of multiplying by 6, which is to divide by 6. And p equals 3. All right. Big takeaway here. Your simplifying step may look different, right? First one, we combine like terms. Second one, we distributed. Third and fourth, we moved all the variables to one side. Once we did that simplifying step, then we got to a two-step equation that we started doing the opposites again. Friends, I got one more problem for us. Let's take a look. My last problem for this video is a doozy, okay? Uh, that just means it's all got a lot of steps to it. So let's talk about, I see these numbers in front of the parentheses. They're drawing my eye. So I'm going to begin there by distributing. I'll distribute the 2 first and then the 4. 
Notice I'm going to keep this 5 out here. And 2 times 4 gives me 8. Then I'm going to distribute this 5. So 5 times k gives me 5k, and 5 times 3 is 15. Now let's combine like terms on both sides. We'll just clean it up just a little bit. 5 plus 8 gives me the 13. And then over here on the right, negative 15 plus 10 is minus 5. So I see variables on both sides. So we're going to try to move the variables all to one side. I'm going to move this 2k since it's being added. I'll do the opposite, which is to subtract 2k. Don't forget to write it underneath its like term. The opposites cancel, leaving me with 13 equals 5k minus 2k is 3k. And there's my two-step equation. I'm ready to go. So we're going to do the opposite of subtracting 5, which is to add 5. And that gives me 18 equals 3k. Now we do the opposite of multiplying by 3, which is to divide by 3. And we get 6 equals k. We did it. That was a lot of steps in that one. Friends, I hope that you can see the progression in this lesson. I took you from a one-step equation. We got a little harder and went to a two-step equation. We got a little harder and went to a multi-step. We got one more step harder. We made it where variables were on both sides, okay? Then we put it all together in this last problem to do a little bit of everything until we were able to get back to that two-step equation. Then we started doing the opposite to both sides. Practice makes progress when you're working with equations. So I encourage you to practice, practice, practice these concepts of doing the opposite to both sides and getting all your variables on one side. It's going to help you feel more confident with solving these equations. All right, friends, have a great week. Bye-bye.